What is going on? What in blue blazes is that? I'm Alan Smith, welcome to the show. You know, when you think about superpowers, it'd be really fun to have, wouldn't they? You know, like X-ray vision, super strength, or the ability to fly. These qualities make an individual who wields these powers special. Well, it may not be like in the comic books, but there are real things out there with super abilities. And the great thing is you don't have to look very far to find them. You know, this lowly root vegetable of beet comes in a wide range of shapes, sizes, colors, and certainly flavors. It's the sort of thing that can add something special to virtually any meal. Now, this variety of beet is called Touchstone Gold. You'll find Touchstone Gold is a mild and sweet tasting beet with vibrant yellow flesh and a golden globe shaped root. The eye catching color has made it not only sought after as a vegetable in the produce aisle, but it's featured on many popular cooking channels and in magazines. As you can see, these beets will grow prolifically in your garden, so thinning is important. Now here's a tip on thinning you may want to keep in mind. Once the little guys are about four to five inches tall, rather than thinning by pulling all of them, just cut the tops off the unwanted seedlings. You'll find this prevents injury to the roots of the desired plants that you're leaving to grow to maturity. And you get the benefit of eating all those delicious young green beet leaves. So let's say you're one of those more traditional type people that want to go back to the great old deep red beet. This is one called Merlin. As you can see, it has smooth red globe-shaped roots with small medium crowns and tap roots. You'll find this beet really stands out in the flavor department due to its high sugar content. I find these delicious roasted on their own or served with other root crops that are roasted together for a dish that will surely warm the body and soul. What can I get for you, honey? Oh, well, you know, I don't know. I need to take a look here. You know, there's so many choices here. It may take me a minute. Oh, not a problem. You know, I just love eggs any way I can get them. And the fresher, the better. Even if they come out of your own backyard, you see free range hens tend to lay eggs that have a richer flavor and many more nutrients with twice the omega-3s, vitamin E, and four to six times as much vitamin D. The best news of all, they also lay less saturated fat and cholesterol than supermarket eggs. Eggs, like just about any other food item, are best as fresh as you can get them because they'll lose flavor as time passes. I wonder if I can get these eggs Benedict to go. Mm. Now you may be wondering where you can get the freshest eggs. Fresh eggs do taste a lot different than those store-bought eggs. Of course, you can always visit the neighborhood farmer's market, find a restaurant that's sourcing locally raised food, or better yet, take the plunge and invest in a backyard flock of your own. So you may be asking, what breed should I get? Well, for newbies, I recommend, if you want lots of white eggs, you go with the Legrans or the white-faced black Spanish. If you're into brown eggs, you may want to go with an old standby like Plymouth Rocks or even some of those beautiful golden buff Orpingtons. You know, it's probably obvious, but healthy chickens are going to be a lot more productive in the egg business. And you also just want to make sure that they have everything they need. Again, it may be obvious, but 
You know, if they don't have all of the raw materials to produce these delicious eggs, they're just not gonna get as many. And speaking of needs, proper nutrition should be right up there at the top of the list. He agrees. Inadequate nutrition can result in low levels of energy, protein, and calcium, which can all lead to a drop in egg production. This is why it's so important to supply your birds with a constant supply of nutritionally balanced layer feed. The other thing you want to give your chickens is as much free range grass as possible. I love to get my birds outside and let them run around the lawn eating insects and lots of that green stuff. You know, the benefit of having a few chickens around far outweighs the cost. Just think about all these delicious eggs you're gonna have for years to come. If you just keep a few hens in the backyard, yeah, you can't have any roosters probably, but you don't need roosters to have delicious, fresh, and healthy eggs. Give it a try. Go get you some birds. Now that we have fresh eggs, what do we do with them? Eggs are so versatile and good for you. Of course we know this, so you really can't go wrong. One of my favorite things to do with eggs is just to whip up a quiche because you can get creative and add whatever you have on hand, like tomato, basil, and mozzarella. I love berries. Just about any kind you can name, I'm crazy about them. Look at these blueberries, and they're in good company. Just behind them, you can see we're finishing up a raspberry crop. Mm, delicious. Let's get back to the blueberries for just a moment. You see, you might call these nature's little superheroes when it comes to nutrition. They're just packed full of vitamins and antioxidants. They're really good for you. And blueberries can be a little challenging to grow, but if you get a few things right, they're actually pretty easy. Now, you may want to keep in mind that blueberries require two different varieties to pollinate and set fruit like this. So you need at least two varieties of these, which isn't such a bad idea. Not only is the fruit really attractive, but in the fall, these plants have beautiful foliage. It just looks like it's on fire. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind for the culture of blueberries. They like really acidic soil. So a lot of blueberry farmers use ammonium sulfate. That helps to make the soil a little more acidic. Also, you wanna plant them kind of high in a really loose kind of soil. Um, I tend to like to burn them up or put them in raised beds as you see here. And then we use a straw mulch, but you can use compost or anything like that to help keep the soil consistently moist. There are lots of varieties 
and there are lots of varieties being developed all the time. So there's a blueberry out there for you. They also grow well in containers, so don't let space be a limitation for you growing these wonderful fruits. You know, I can't say enough good things about blueberries. They're the perfect food and easy to grow. Whether you have room or not, remember, try to grow some in containers. Hey, I just about have enough here for a pie. After visiting the local berry farm and winery, I couldn't resist the opportunity to share with you a delicious and refreshing berry wine spritzer. Great. What do you think of the garden? Oh, it looks beautiful. It's so full right now. It has really plumped up since you were here last. Yes, it has, absolutely. So Alexis, with this theme in mind, what, what do you have in mind for the kitchen and what are you extracting from the garden? Well, I've got this beautiful rosemary. I was thinking about turning it into an oil mm. and then, oh, I know. And then I was thinking of a parsnip puree to go with it. Lovely, I love parsnips. Oh yeah, it's a great time of year for them. So you're gonna create a puree, which is a super way to think about that root vegetable that doesn't get a lot of attention. Right. Which I find very delicious. Incorporating it. And then what about a super food? What, what are some of your favorite super foods? Well, I love blueberries, um, kale, mm. shard, spinach, all the leafy greens. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm a big shard fanatic. You think you'll use some of that? I would love to use some shard. Well, here in the garden, there's some uh, a variety that we're growing this year called peppermint shard, which is I, I find it really beautiful and delicious. Yeah. So I'd love to I'd love to know what you think of it. Oh, it's beautiful. I saw it. Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay. <laughs> Good. Well, let's see what you come up with. Okay, sounds Can't great. Wait. Thank you. There's a classification of foods that have a lot of antioxidants and good vitamins and nutrients, and they're classified as superfoods. Blueberries is a type of fruit that comes to mind quickly, but also uh, greens like spinach, kale, and chard are all superfoods. So we decided to take some chard out of the garden, and since it's a superfood that is not utilized um, a lot, we wanted to put a recipe together using chard, but was a healthy version of creamed greens. The alternative to dairies was to uh, make a vegetable puree. So I used um, parsnips and celery root and roasted them to get a little caramelization and bring out the sweetness of these great root vegetables. Celery root, or celiac, is often a little intimidating to people at the grocery store. When you cut it, you want a smaller, even-sized cut so that they roast at the same time. And I go for about a quarter-inch cut. 
doesn't have to be perfect. It can be a rustic square. I took the diced celery root and parsnips and uh, tossed each in oil and salt and then laid them on a baking sheet to cook in the oven, 375 degree temperature. It takes about 20 minutes. You want to separate them because the celery root will take a little bit longer than the parsnips. You just want to make sure that they're fork tender. I took about half of a cup of both parsnip and celery root and blended them together with um, about a quarter cup of chicken stock and a tablespoon of butter. An alternative to chicken stock, um, if you wanted to keep it vegetarian, is you could use a vegetable stock. Uh, you could use water and you could also use milk or heavy cream if you want to keep it richer. So I blended it to a smooth consistency and um, you could take it a little bit further and add more stock and make a soup from there or uh, use the puree as a sauce itself. After the puree was finished, I took some shallots and the shard stems and sauteed them and folded in the uh, shard leaves with a little bit of the puree and then I finished with some sherry vinegar and lemon. This dish could um, be substituted with other greens such as spinach or kale that are also you know, great superfoods. Mmm, this smells so good. You know, I'm just crazy about anything green, particularly leafy greens. And this mustard green hot dip is so delicious. And it's healthier than most store-bought spinach dips. You'll begin by slicing two heads of mustard greens into one-inch strips. Next, heat three tablespoons of olive oil in a large skillet and saute the greens on medium heat for about 12 minutes until they're completely wilted. Next, you'll want to add in a half a can of drained artichoke hearts, a half a cup of roasted red peppers, one teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of freshly cracked black pepper. Then cook an additional seven minutes. Next, place the vegetable mixture into a food processor and combine with five ounces of Italian cheese herb cooking cream, four ounces of firm tofu that's been cubed and pressed, a half a red onion finely diced, then one tablespoon each of dried basil, oregano, and thyme, and then add one teaspoon of salt. Then you'll want to pulse this until it's thoroughly combined. Place the mixture into a small baking dish with about a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Bake in a 350 degree oven for 20 minutes until the cheese on top is golden brown. Give this mustard greens dip a try. They'll be glad you did. Now broccoli may not be everyone's favorite superfood, but after this fabulous salad, it just might be bumped up to the top of your list. I wanna share with you one of my favorite springtime recipes. The reason I'm so enthusiastic about this recipe is that it uses one of my favorite springtime vegetables, and that's broccoli. You know, broccoli is one of those marvelous plants that if you're one of those early bird type people that wanna get out in the garden like well before spring, 
you can plant broccoli because it can really take the cold. And it's a superfood. So what is there not to like about broccoli and even growing some of it yourself? Now, for this recipe, it takes really very few ingredients. And we're gonna start by making a dressing. And that's using the zest and the juice of two lemons. So I'm just juicing this last lemon here. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I uh, get out all of the lemon seed. You can see there's just a few in there that we wanna take out. Do that with a fork. So I'm gonna take the juice and add it to this. And then I've got six tablespoons of hazelnut oil. Gonna add to it. And then of course we can't forget the lemon zest. Goes in there like that, it's really light and fluffy. And I'm gonna take just a dash of salt, just a little sea salt there, and one quarter teaspoon of ground white pepper. All right, all that's in there, and we're just gonna mix it together like this. Simple, 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 but very, very flavorful. All right, now, next, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take and cut the florets off of some stalks of broccoli. You want four cups of florets. What I did here is I steamed them for about four to five minutes, pulled them out of the steamer, and dunked them immediately into ice water. So I have these nice, sort of al dente pieces of broccoli. Has just a little bit of crunch to it. Perfect. Just take this plate. I take the dressing and just, I'm gonna add most of it to the broccoli, like this. Saving just a little bit. Mix this up with my hands. You wanna make sure that all the florets are completely covered, like this. And then to this, you wanna add a half a cup of toasted hazelnuts. I love the flavor of these. They are so good. And all I did was just toast those in a pan on the stove. It took about five minutes. And then you just wanna put it on a plate to serve, like this, and you can drizzle the rest of the dressing over it. This is a delicious and healthy light side for many entrees. Give it a try. You'll be glad you put this early spring vegetable to good use. Well, that's all the time we have for today's show. You know, there's so many super things in the world. It's just a matter of recognizing them. And some of the most extraordinary things come in the simplest packages. Until next time, I'm Alan Smith. Get away from my food. This is my food.